Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ray Hennessy here. I wanted to talk to you about wildlife lenses, specifically with Nikon and specifically 400 millimeters. All right, so we have a few options here. A 100 to 400 millimeter zoom, a 400 millimeter f4.5 prime, and then the big 400 millimeter 2.8. So, which one's the best? There is no best. There never is with any of this stuff in my opinion. There's never a best for everything. There's a best for what you wanna do, what your goals are, what your budget is, all those sort of things. So the way I have these set up right here, least expensive, next most expensive, and then obviously insanely expensive with the 2.8. So the difference between the 100 to 400 and the 400 F4.5 is usually less than $500 difference. So what would cause you to buy one over the other? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, this one's gonna be the most versatile as far as options to zoom. Neither of these other lenses zoom at all, right? Uh, cheapest option, and I don't know, I didn't really look up the specs on the exact weight, but in the hand, they feel about the same. Um, I have all of these, the other two lenses here mounted on Nikon Z9s, and this is Emily's setup here. It's so well balanced, it really is. So it just feels great on the camera. Um, I mean, if you kind of hold it by the center here, it does just balance so well. It just, it's a wonderful feeling to shoot. And the lovely thing about a Prime is you just don't have to worry about zooming. You don't have to worry, oh, am I gonna zoom in or zoom out or change anything? It's just, this is your setup, you're ready to go. Also, I would say in practice, in shooting these, this lens just feels a little bit snappier, which makes sense. It's at f4.5, so it's letting a little bit more light into the sensor than the 5.6 that this lens, the zoom lens, would let in at 400 millimeter. This one is a 5.6 lens at 500 millimeter. And it's a prime lens. So prime lenses just tend to seem to be a little bit snappier. That being said, I've shot a ton of stuff with this 100 to 400. I've shot flight shots, no problem. Like, is there a sharpness difference in reality? Yeah, I'd say from this to the 2.8, you can see a little bit if you pixel peep. How does that translate into real world photos when you're sharing them online like most of us are doing? These are all lenses that I don't think anybody could tell the difference with sharpness wise uh, with a normal photo shared online. Yes, if you had the full, what was it 45 megapixel sensor out of this and zoomed in, can you tell the difference in some sharpness? Yes, I look at the 400 28 and see the photos out of that and it's like, okay, that's about the sharpest thing I've ever seen. But I still shoot this a ton and when I shot Emily's lens and I've seen what she shot, it looks amazing. So we have our size difference, our weight difference, our convenience of zoom difference with the zoom and our speed difference. So the fastest lens, meaning letting the most light in, number one, so you can shoot in the lowest light conditions, having the shallowest depth of field and being the fastest to focus is this big 400 8 That lens is gonna be the speediest, but we have a massive difference between these two lenses and the price until we get to that one. You know, uh, $14,000 US, like that's crazy. It's a massive difference. It's like three of these lenses to get one of those, okay? Um, now, what gives you the longest reach? This one does because it has the built-in teleconverter. That being said, um, I will be putting a video out on this lens to show you the difference between using the teleconverter or not. What is to be gained with this teleconverter? In my experience, it's simply resolution. It's just a resolution gain. Um, yes, it changes it to 560 millimeter, but it's basically the same as cropping in on the 400 to 8 with a high resolution sensor. And I'll show you what I mean in another video. So what's the best lens for you? Well, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Um, if you're talking the light portable, um, more reasonably priced options here. What's more important? Do you want a little bit of flexibility in your zoom and compositions to be able to go out to 100 millimeter, include a lot more habitat, or just shoot more variety of stuff? Uh, or do you want the most compact, fast, sharpest lens? Do you shoot a ton of action? Like this might be the lens for you. Also, what's the other difference we're gonna have in the look of these photos is that minimum aperture, okay? and. I'm gonna show you some photos in just a little bit to show you the exact difference. I shot the same scene with the, the big 400-2.8 at 2.8, at f4.5, and at 5.6. So you can see the actual difference, what it means in real world shooting conditions. 
Yes, you can do a bunch of test subjects and see what it actually looks like. But when you actually take these things out into the field, is there a difference? And yes, there is. There's a noticeable difference. The biggest difference, of course, be going down to 2.8. You're going to see the biggest difference there. It's got that dreamy background. But is there a difference between 5.6 and 4.5? It doesn't sound like much, does it? There's a difference in the look of the photo. Is it enough for you? Uh, it really depends. Is it going to be noticeable in a lot of shooting scenarios? Probably not a ton, but there are scenarios where it makes a difference. And those scenarios being when you're in a little bit more closer habitats. Think, so think like forests and stuff like that. If you're out here on a beach, out here in the marsh shooting with the background a quarter mile, an actual mile away in the background, you aren't going to tell the difference between any of these. They're all going to blur that background beautifully and it's going to look amazing when shot at 400 millimeter. But if you're in those closer, tighter habitat areas, uh, you're going to see the difference between what 5.6 renders that background like and 4.5 does, and then obviously the big jump to 2.8. Let's take a look at some of these shots taken at different apertures, the same exact shot. All right, so I framed these images up this way. There's two different photos we'll look at because if you shoot something really close with a distant background, I think it's just going to completely look blurred you know, super smooth background, doesn't really matter the aperture. So I wanted something that had smaller in frames, some distance, and different distances. This is all pretty far away background, but you can still notice the difference. All right, so here we are, 400 millimeter. This would be the equivalent of the 100 to 400 shot at 5.6. That's the minimum aperture for that lens. And here we go to the 4.5. So that would be the 400 millimeter f4.5. So look at that difference. There's the 5.6. Back to four five, five six, four five. Notice right in here, watch that area. So we'll go five six, four five. Not a massive difference there, but check out back here now. Four five, or I'm sorry, five six and four five. Five six and four five. You can definitely see, especially right here in this transitional area, five six, four five. It definitely smooths things up. And then we'll drop down to the two eight where everything gets a lot more dreamy. Of course, that's what we expected. The 2.8 is going to be the biggest difference there. So if we take a look between the 2.8 and the 5.6, we're going to see a really big difference there. So here's f2.8 and there's 5.6. So a large difference there. But I think what most people would be curious about is what does it look like between the 100 to 400 5.6 and the 400 millimeter prime 4.5. And there you go. So not hugely dramatic but definitely a difference. Let's take a look at our next example. Here we are again. This will be the equivalent of the 100 to 400 at 5.6. So there's 5.6 and 4.5. Here we definitely get to see a little bit more of a noticeable difference. There's 4.5 and 5.6. You can see in here but especially in these grasses here and the way they're rendered the 4.5 definitely starts to make things look a little bit more dreamy. And this is a great example because Especially watch the foreground here. Five, six, four, five. This is a great example because we have a lot of different layering going on here. We have a background that's not too far away right here, and then it progressively gets further away. So obviously the further back, the more we'll notice the difference there. So there's five, six. If we watch up in there, four, five. And then again, we'll drop down to that two, eight where everything gets super dreamy. Always going to be the biggest noticeable difference there going from two, eight to the four, five and then the 5.6. But there is a difference there. It's noticeable. There's 5.6 one more time and 4.5. So there you have it. There's all of the photos. Uh, you got your 5.6, 4.5, and 2.8 there. What's my recommendation? My recommendation is do whatever feels right to you. <laughs> That's really it, you know? Uh, if money is no object and you want the best, fastest lens that exists, this 400 28 is great. I am happy I have it. I do shoot it a lot. That being said, I think some of my most creative shots recently have come from the 100 to 400, which is the other lens I own. I don't own this 400 45, so I haven't shot it that much. But thanks to Emily, she's let me shoot it enough to just get a good feel for that lens. It's an amazing lens. I love it. Every one of these is an amazing lens. So I do like having both of these. Um, I have the luxury of having both of these. So it's great that when I'm going out in low light or I just want that extra bit of resolution slash reach that I can get by flipping that teleconverter in, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, but I have to say, walking around with this all day, even though it is very hand-holdable and lightweight and balanced well, 
is very different than walking around with either one of these lighter weight setups. If I'm gonna go out for hours on end, I'm probably not taking that big lens with me. If I'm gonna go out and I want to photograph some stuff and incorporate a little bit more environment, a little bit different looks, or have the wonderful variation that this lens does, which is allows me to get that 400 millimeter telephoto look, and then a split second later zoom out to 100 millimeter and get a wide, more in habitat shot in an instant, this is the lens for me every single time. So I love having both. I love being able to go back and forth. And in my opinion, there is no perfect lens for all of them. So um, I think the most helpful thing you're gonna see is those photos that I showed you that show you exactly what the same scene looks like, shot at 400 millimeter with those different apertures. And hopefully that can help you decide a little bit what you're gonna do. But the other thing is go out and test the lenses. If you have a friend or somebody else that has them, Go try and shoot them a little bit, rent them, see what makes sense for you there. And then of course there's budget. So that's my thought on these lenses. I'll do a separate video whenever I get a chance, which is not very often, I'm incredibly busy, but I do wanna do another video on this 400 2.8 and show you what the difference is between shooting that at 2.8 and then flipping that teleconverter in and going from 400 2.8 to 560 F4 and show you how Honestly, that teleconverter does not make that much of a difference other than the resolution thing. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this video and I'll see you guys on the next time. Happy shooting, everybody.